Good evening, everyone, and happy holidays. Welcome to a meeting of the 100 and Central Regional High School Board of Education. Please be advised that this and all meetings of the board are open to the public and media, consistent with the Open Public Meetings Act, NJSA 10 colon 4-6, and that advance notice required therein has been provided. Meeting notice was also posted in the boardroom of the upper school campus, sent to the Courier News, Star Ledger, Express Times, and the Hunter and County Democrat, and sent to the clerks of Delaware Township, East Amwell Township, Flemington Borough, Raritan Township, and Reddington Township. The public will have an opportunity to be heard as shown on the agenda. Can I have a roll call, please, Mrs. Spitzer? Mrs. Bloodfield? Mr. Davidson? Here. Mrs. Duggan? Here. Mr. Fowler? Mrs. Hughes? Here. Mrs. Kellogg? Here. Mrs. O'Donnell? Mrs. Peterson? Here. And Mr. Reimer? Thank you. Can everyone rise, please, for a flag salute? <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I am going to take the liberty of reading the district mission statement tonight. 100 and Central is an innovative educational community dedicated to the intellectual, social, and emotional safety and growth of all students. While fostering curiosity and promoting wellness, we aspire to create powerful learning experiences, establish strong partnerships, and serve as contributing members of society. Can I have a motion, please, to approve our minutes from the November 20th meeting? Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, can I have a roll call vote, please? Mr. Davidson? Yes. Mrs. Duggan? Yes. Mrs. Kellogg? Yes. Mrs. Peterson? Yes. And Mrs. Hughes? Yes. Oh, yes, motion carried. Thank you. We've received no correspondence this month. And with that, I'll turn it over to Dr. Moore for his superintendent's report. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Hughes, and thank you for reading the mission statement. I, that may be the first time you've done that. It was, Thank first you. and last. Excellent. <laughs> um, so this is fantastic. Uh, just watching you all, and we're going to get a chance really soon to celebrate you all. Uh, we're going to dive right into that, but I just want to draw a little history on this. I think we started doing this as a group back in 2021 with COVID. I remember doing the first time in the, audit, uh, in the commons, um, and then we moved into the little theater as things were, were back to normal and realized this was too small. Um, so, and, and folks couldn't come in and see it. You were sort of coming in in shifts. So this is fantastic to have you all here tonight uh, to be able to see each other and just celebrate together all the good that is going on here at Central. And um, what I'd like to do to start is if I, I can ask everyone to sort of move to the front so that as folks come down to receive the board's congratulations and kudos, you can shake some hands and all of that, um, just so that everybody can hear how proud we are of all of you as you walk across the front of the stage. Um, and I'll go to the microphone and I'll get, us, I'll get us started. So let's all shift out front. And again, apo well, apologies and thank you. Apologies for the switch in schedule and thank you for your flexibility. Um, with uh, our cancellation on Monday night, we found ourselves you know, needing to come together before the winter break, but also wanting to find a good, a good time to allow everybody to join us. And I'm so glad so many of you could join us. It's fantastic. Um, I want to start tonight actually with uh, uh, something that we do annually. So I'm going to go a touch out of order from what's in the agenda under my report. Each year, the school selects a teacher of the year and an education services professional of the year. Uh, and with the schedule change, we weren't able to get both of them out here tonight, but we do have our teacher of the year here tonight. And so I'm going to ask her to come up, and she loves all the attention. I'm going to ask her to come up. <laughs> Ms. Heather Clapp. <laughs> Is this? There we go. You want some picture. So. Thank you. <laughs> so stay here a second. Um, are you coming back up for the science presentation too? Oh, all right, okay. Uh, so one of the things that we always celebrate is just 
the empowerment of all different kinds of students, all different kinds of abilities. And the, my favorite thing that I've, one of my favorite things that I've seen over the past couple of years is the work that Mrs. Clapp did and, and the other teachers in our Aspire program to work with the students to create a garden outside of their classroom or outside of our alternative school classroom. And so uh, I don't know if that's why she got this award, but she definitely deserves it because of that and everything else that she does. So I have a congratulations. And just, So, and I, I don't think she was able to make it tonight, but I want to make sure Lauren Calvosa is not out there, right? All right, Lauren Calvosa is one of our behaviorists working in our special education department. She is our education services professional of the year. Um, I'll accept this on her behalf and we'll, we'll give that to her. Uh, we'll give that to her tomorrow. Um, another one who likes, who likes attention. <laughs> but uh, Lauren works in our autism um, program. She works with some of our uh, uh, some of our students who need the most support in our special education program. And so just really proud of her work and the work of that department uh, as well. So we'll give her a hand of, uh, round of applause. Too. All right, so I wanted to do that to make sure that everybody was here to, to clap for you. All right, uh, so um, who's up next? Dr. Zurawicki, come on up. Hi, thank you. Um, my name is Danielle Zurawicki and I'm the Supervisor of Counseling. Um, and so I'm going to start off today um, by recognizing two staff members, one of whom couldn't be here, but I still want to make sure I recognize her. Um, and these are two members who work in our house teams. And so they are on the class of 2027 team, which means they work with our freshmen, and they spend almost their entire day supporting others, oftentimes unseen. And I'm very honored to work with them and to know them and to share that together they received the Families and Schools Together Work for Children grant. So what is this? This grant is designed to build connections with our multilingual language learners. And it works in three areas, education or literacy, health and community connections. And so this year they're going to be hosting three events that bring together students, families, school representatives and outside agencies. So I want to say thank you to Carol Rocha, who is our, one of our house office secretaries. <laughs> you know, also one who you can tell loves the attention as well. Um, and the other one is Carrie Kelly, who is a, um, a counselor on the freshman team. So thank you, Carol. <laughs> Um, so I have a little background um, to read for my next one to just kind of explain the significance of the achievement that some of these students, um, you know, the recognition that they're receiving today. So last October, um, we offered the PSATs to all students in grades 9 through 11. Our 11th graders specifically take the National Merit Scholarship Qualifying Test, or NMSQT. It's a mouthful. So the NMSQT, it calculates something they call a selection index. And they do this for each student and by state. So this year's NMSQT selection index cutoffs range from 207 to 223. Of course, New Jersey is 223, right? We're all the way at the top of that selection. And so I tell you this because I want you to know how challenging it is for a student in New Jersey to qualify um, for these awards. So in September 20, uh, we learned that about um, 3,400 students, um, or sorry, 34,000 students of high scores were designated commended students. So these are in recognition of students for their outstanding ability and potential for academic success in, in, um, in college. And so the National Merit Scholarship Corporation um, has identified a bunch of um, several commended students that I'd like to uh, announce today. There are some who couldn't be here, but I will share who's here today. And so I want you to join me in congratulating Jacob Bessino. <laughs> Bri Brianna Campbell. You can go ahead. Go ahead. Kristen Johansson. Andy Liu, and Lauren McCarthy.
Congratulations, guys. You can go ahead and you can go back and sit. <laughs> and then Kristen, you come back around. Okay. So um, the next one is for AP Capstone. So AP Capstone is a diploma program from College Board that's based on two year-long AP courses. This is AP Seminar and AP Research. So rather than teaching subject-specific content, these courses develop students' skills in research, analysis, evidence-based arguments, collaboration, writing, and presenting. Students who complete the two-year program can earn an AP Capstone diploma. These are students who have scored, earned a score of three or higher on the AP seminar and AP research and on four additional AP exams. So that's six total. Um, and so we have two here. Um, many of the students who had earned this have graduated already because we don't get these results, unfortunately, until the summer. But please join me in congratulating Kristen Johansson. <laughs> and Elena Liu. Congratulations. And so, thank you, I am done. Um, I'm gonna turn it over to our Supervisor of Athletics, um, Mr. Jesse Spencer. Sorry, I'm a little taller. The, uh, so, uh, thank you very much. It's always an honor to be able to come to the, one of the board meetings uh, especially in the fall, uh, doing it out of the gate. It's always a fun, fun night, and I uh, appreciate the time that everybody gives us to do it and the recognition that the board and superintendent uh, has always supported, uh, especially not only our programs as a whole, but all of, our, all of us individually, and so it goes, I uh, love doing this. Um, before I start with athletics, I do just want to make one more staff recognition, if I can. Is Miss Rocha still in the building? Would you please come up here and join me for a second? <laughs> so, Ms. Rocha is one of our House Office Secretaries, and she is an amazing human being who does outstanding work, not only for our students here, but all of our staff. She's very, somebody that we can always rely on. She's always supportive. And she's, only, she's always a phone call away, let, let me tell you. Um, but what Ms. Rocha, what you don't know about Ms. Rocha is that she is one of the kindest people that you'll ever meet. And she heads up on her own, really with no help, but she runs a food collection through our school community every Thanksgiving, every November. And she puts together on her own, collects, collects all the, the food items, puts meals together for families that are in need or that just need a, uh, a, a hot meal on a good day. So she runs this every year. And this year, 20 meals she dis distributed to families around our community for Thanksgiving. And the holiday was just a little bit brighter for everybody. So, Ms. Rocha, we would like to just thank you for your efforts and an outstanding accomplishment. So thank you very much. So, thank you for letting me steal that moment. That was really great. Thank you. All right, so what I'm here for is to recognize some of our student athletes and some of our fall athletic uh, sports recognitions. We had an outstanding fall season really across the board. Um, it was really fun to watch. It was great to be a part of, and uh, we just had an outstanding year, so I'm happy to be able to be here to kind of talk, talk to you about some of those things. First up, I'd just like to bring up a couple members of our boys cross country team. Come on up. So our boys cross country team, they uh, were our 100 and more in Sussex champions. They uh, took that crown home, which was an outstanding accomplishment for them. Had a great run at the section, groups, and the meet of champions. And uh, so we wanted to bring them up to congratulate them. Um, also, a couple of individual honors that we always like to recognize. Um, I will start with just our conference and county members that are here with us. Uh, we have Noah Smith, Sawyer, Stolotano, William Perry, and Nick Corigliano. So they're here today, so congratulations. And also, Noah Smith, 
He was the Hunterdon County or Hunterdon County Democrat Runner of the Year this year. Congratulations to you on that. He was a uh, first team, first team all county, first team all conference, and he was the individual Hunter and Warren Sussex champion. So congratulations to you. Congratulations. All right, I am going to skip ahead just a little bit because I'm going to try to do this a little bit alphabetical order. I'd like to bring up our head football coach, Mr. Casey Ransone. Now, unfortunately, some of our players weren't able to join us tonight because they're actually involved in other athletics this evening. So, um, but uh, Mr. Ransone, he's our head football coach, past five years, and uh, this year. He was uh, the BCC, which is the big uh, Central Conference football, and he was voted as the Coach of the Year. So uh, <laughs> I wanted to recognize, you know, not some of our students, but also some of our staff that reaches these accomplishments because it's, a, it's recognized by members of this group and football. We have five big football conferences in the state of New Jersey and they all select one from each of their groups. And, uh, and this year, 100 and Central, honored enough to have Casey represent our school and represent us as the coach of the year for our football team. So <laughs> congratulations to you. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Good job. All right, next up, we're gonna recognize some of our girls soccer players. Bring, come on up. All right, this is uh, some of our individual girls soccer honors, either being represented here, all conference, all county. Um, and these, the members of the girls soccer team, they're always fun to watch. Uh, at their banquet this year, I said the thing, most of the thing that impressed me about this team was grit. I mean, you watch them play day in and day out and the way that they attacked it, the grit that they had on the field, and every game was a battle and uh, they were just a lot of fun to watch. Um, and they ended up going all the way to the Group 4 uh, Central, or Group 4 North sectional semifinal, which was all unbelievable. So uh, congratulations to them. And our individual honors, and I will read everybody's name, a couple of them weren't here to join us, but Lexi Dendis, Megan Keller, Lauren Fascinelli, Gabby Givend, Sarah Erb, Lila Hopkins, Aaron Johnson and Lila Parente were first team, second team, or honorable mention, all county, all conference, outstanding accomplishments. And our section arguably is one of the toughest in the state of New Jersey. So congratulations to you guys. All right, next up, a girls field hockey team. Come on up. This team is all about leadership. In my opinion, when I watched them throughout the course of the year, their leadership on and off the field, the way that they went about their business, how they conducted themselves, they were an outstanding, another outstanding group to be a part of and be able to watch. Um, especially, I won't go into it too deep, but from last year to this year, and the things that they were able to accomplish from the last year to this year was just remarkable. Last year was a very, <laughs> all right, trying year, Rebuilding. trying year. Rebuilding, there you go, rebuilding year. But I'll tell you what, this year they came out, they went after it, they got after it. And our 2023 field hockey team was the uh, Skyland Conference Division Champions. Had a great run, and uh, congratulations to you guys. Again, <laughs> and once again, some of our individual honors uh, being named also all count conference, all county, 
and first team, second team. So we have Adriana Duda, Salone Coddington, Amanda Walker, Ashley Gebhardt, Jessica Schnell, Jelly, <laughs> Jocelyn Sponzo, Maggie Scally, and Danica Podinker. So congratulations to you guys. And thank you, Ms. Hoff, for being here. Thank you for Ms. Spina for being here. Sorry, I missed her. Thank you, Ms. Hoff, for joining us tonight. She was our assistant field hockey coach and an outstanding job. Congrats. <laughs> All right, next up, girls volleyball. This is our girls volleyball team. And again, just to steal a moment, but uh, this group of individuals, I thought camaraderie was their key to their success this season. They have a great group of camaraderie. They have great relationships with each other. And I, th I thought that that showed on the court, and I thought that the way that they played in between the lines was just uh, outstanding. They were, all, they were awesome to watch. Um, again, this, this year, girls volleyball has always been a strong program. They always do a lot of good things throughout the course of the year. This year, our girls volleyball team was named the Hunterdon County Democrat Team of the Year for girls volleyball. You know that? You know that? And uh, they were, again, runners up in the state semifinals for our section uh, against Old Bridge, which no, they're, they're, uh, they're always a, a nemesis, but you know what? We'll get them. So, uh, again, congratulations, you guys, on not only on your season, but individually. We'll run through some of those things. All right, so, again, all county, all conference, first and second team, Emma Kovacs, Becky Rinsone, Elisa Chin, Katie McBriarty and Emma Balica. They were all conference, all county members, and congratulations to you guys. And Reagan Diba, got it. Reagan Diba, she was an all state selection this year. She is the girls volleyball 100 and county player of the year. And she was the first team all county representative for Hunter and Warren Sussex. Congratulations to you guys. Awesome work. Congrats. 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 Once again, thank you very much for your time. Really appreciate it. I hope you have a great rest of your night. And I am introducing Mr. Scott Cohen, Student Activities, Dean of Students. Thank you. Thank you and good evening. Yes, I'm Scott Cohen, Dean of Students, uh, also oversee all the student activities. And I want to thank Dr. Moore, President of the Board, Ms. Hughes, and the entire Board of Ed for their continual support. We have at Central over 110 clubs and activities to give you magnitude of scale of how committed and connected our kids are both internally in our internal community and our external community. And we would be here all night talking about the tremendous amount of work that they're contributing in and out of our schools. But tonight is one of those special nights where we get to recognize some of the amazing things that have happened, keeping in mind that we have only been in school for four months. So wait till spring because more good stuff to come. And um, I'm just thrilled to be here and, and have the privilege of uh, announcing the wonderful work that the students have been doing. Uh, we're gonna start off, and I'm not gonna call them up just yet because it's a large contingency, uh, but we're gonna start off with our MRD Marching Red Devils. Uh, hopefully some of you have been out to our football games or events where you've seen our fantastic musical performances by the MRD, as well as our color guard who've had some amazing seasons the past couple of years, and this year is just as stellar as previous years. So under the supervision of Mr. Magalio and Mr. DJ Dean, Jean, uh, Deans, who's here. Um, it's been a fantastic season, and here are just some of the accomplishments for this year. The U.S. Band's NJ State Championships, the MRD placed second out of their group five size group and fourth out of 16 bands in the A classification. 
the Ludwig Classic competition at MetLife Stadium. The band scored third place in the size grouping out of seven bands in that grouping and scored fifth place overall in the A classification out of 45 bands in total. And it keeps on going, folks. The Ridge High School competition, they received first place. MRD group, color guard, come on down. Well done. All right. Awesome. Now, continuing in the space of our arts programs, which are second to none in our district, the 1112 Dramatics Play. If you did not see Inherit the Wind this year, you missed something extraordinary. It was one of the finest performances we've had at Central. This is the group's 68th year in existence at Central. You want to talk about long-term commitments, all right? These students weren't here 68 years ago, but thankfully they're continuing the great tradition. So under the direction and supervision of Ms. Gail Enterline, Ms. Michaela Smith, Mr. Tim Klein, and Ms. Caitlin O'Connor, we're pleased to recognize the amazing performance of the cast and support from the production crew for the play Inherit the Wind. All members from the play were honored and recognized with citations for their incredible work and commitment by Assembly Freeman in our district. So, Inherit the Wind. How are you? Up next, Interact Club. Where's my Interact Club? If you're not familiar with the Interact Club, they operate under the Rotary International Organization. They bring together young people in the age groups of our high school students to develop leadership skills and discovering the power of service above self. Um, so you can really see that both leadership is an extraordinary gift, but also something to uh, have some fun around. This club has been with Hunter and Central for 55 years, so also a very long-standing tradition in our district and incredible commitments. And remember, we're only four months in. They have already given to the Flemington Food Pantry $250 that they've raised and contributed a substantial amount of canned foods and food collection for the pantry. They've also worked with Safe in Hunterdon County, uh, where they've also raised another $250 to help provide shelter for victims of domestic violence. They've done a ton of community outreach and support, uplifting cards for troops and healthcare workers. Furthering, they donated canned goods to a local church for the Thanksgiving food drive that they ran. They've also helped out the Hunter and Cancer Foundation fundraiser. They've also contributed to the Rolling Hills Nursing Home, which was a recent visit that they did, um, where they actually spread joy for the festive season, sang carols, and helped make a day of a difference in the lives of our elderly around the community, handing out goodie bags and all kinds of good treats. And lastly, just recently, they created up 200 um, lunches for people in Newark for the Heavy Laden Ministries, where they bagged and filled sandwiches with bananas, water, and all kinds of products for these folks to have another good free meal. So all of that, they're still doing a ton of stuff, more to come, they're doing great work, the Interact Club. Next, the Speech and Debate Club. And by the way, none of these clubs could be successful without the great leadership of the teachers who volunteer their time to really help the students thrive in the groups in which they're working. So under the leadership of Mr. Leonard, who unfortunately couldn't be here tonight, uh, that club is now in its 64th year. 
So we're seeing a lot of trends of continual efforts behind a lot of this great work being done out of our school. They've had an amazing streak of awards as they consistently do year to year. They're having an upcoming competition here in the school fairly shortly. Um, but I have the whole team come down, I'll just read off. You can get a sense of the magnitude of commitment when it comes to the speech and debate club. How many places they're going out and actually competing. So Amvi Tripathi was a finalist award winner for the New York City Invitation. Not here, okay. Alex Zucchini was a finalist in the CSU Fullerton Fall Speech and Debate Tournament. Claudia Benke was a finalist award winner in the New Jersey Speech and Debate League in the October Speech Festival. Subhash Durba, Neil Kalsi, Jason Pai, Tahim Amid, Arnav Gupta, Alex Zucchini, Sid Narla, and Aryan Verma were finalists in the Phillipsburg Fall Spectacular. Nile Mehta, Alex Zucchini, and Muhammad Hamid were finalists in the William Tennant Invitational. Shelby Manning, Gavin Snyder, Visvam Rajesh, Alessandra Wallace, Neil Kalasa, Henry Shroop, and Amvi Tripathi were finalists in the Randolph Fall Classic. So that's just the round of the competitions. Then, for the National Speech and Debate Honor Society, they have to invest a ton of hours to get points and recognition of awards in order to qualify for certain honors. So again, Neil Klasa was an honor degree, National Speech and Debate. Zara Malik, Excellence Award for National Speech and Debate. Amvi Tripathi, Outstanding Extinction, Extin uh, Extinction for National Speech and Debate. And Alessandra Wallace, an honor degree for national speech and debate. Congratulations. Up next, we have some individuals who have recently, within the last two weeks, tried out, auditioned, and successfully gained acceptance into different musical programs. So with the help of Megan Petrucian, uh, Carly, are you here? Carly, yeah. Carly uh, Perrine recently auditioned and was accepted into the Central New Jersey Regional Choir. <laughs> along with Adriana LaPiccolo, who I don't believe is here tonight. Congratulations. Max Kenny. Max Kenny auditioned and was accepted to the Central Jersey Music Educators Region Honors Band. Max successfully completed the rigorous audition process playing the euphonium and will, be, uh, will be start to rehearse with the Honors Assemb Assemble in preparation for the concert at Wachung Hill School on January 14th. So coming up just when we get back from break. So congratulations, Max. Nice, nicely done. And that concludes our list of wonderful recognition tonight. But again, we have so many students doing so many wonderful things, and we applaud all their work and efforts. Thank you. I'm going to turn it back over to Dr. Moore. And I want to thank you all, and thank you to the board for the support that makes this all possible. Um, and again, echoing what uh, Mr. Cohen said about the staff members who work with these students, the parents, the family members, the friends, uh, it's wonderful to see not just the amount of activity, but also when we go to football games and see so many people cheering on our students, so many people, you know, rooting for them. It's just amazing. This is why, you know, U.S. News and World Report, top high school in the county, one of the top large high schools in the entire state. It's not just because of what they're doing in the classroom. It's because of all of this engagement and participation and service as well. So one more round of applause for all of our kids. Thank you. So at this point, we will take a quick break as we recalibrate. I've got a couple more things really quickly to talk about in my report, and we also have a, a, a really cool science presentation tonight. Um, so I'm going to get the podium out. So we'll take a quick break, just two minutes, and we'll get reset. Do some hand sanitizer. <laughs> It's the carpet. Is that good? It's up here. Okay, go 
We're good? I don't, is he going to talk? Yeah. Well, no. It was just you. <laughs> So, I just count to the call and you have buttons. When a church member comes past this, um, just push the button. Okay. And we're back. Okay. Um, so we, and, and the board will recall certainly, we've taken a new direction with our uh, departmental presentations this year to really focus in on, again, those things about uh, engagement, uh, personalization, service, um, and, and we've asked all the supervisors to bring some folks together to, to just show us all the good that's going on in those departments. Um, we had English. Uh, last month with Mr. McIsaac, and so tonight we have Dr. Hall, and he's going to be uh, opening with Mrs. Jessica Cangelosi Hayter, our Assistant Superintendent for Curriculum and Human Resources, uh, to talk about all the good that's going on in the science department as we continue to reach toward really aspirational goals uh, about uh, the reinvention of school around the individual kid and their aspirations. So, all yours. Okay. It's a little awkward. Okay, good evening. Thank you for having us here tonight. Um, our curriculum and instruction team is continuing with our new format, or newer, I guess is the more appropriate term for department presentations. So tonight you'll learn more about the teaching and learning in our science department. We are very excited to show you how personalization, service learning, and equity are integrated into our science curricula, and especially through the eyes of teachers and students. I think that's what makes these presentations so great and so lively. And so with that, I'm going to pass it on over to our science supervisor, Dr. Matthew Hall. Good evening, everybody. Let's see, I'll take this off. Thanks for having us. We're gonna have a little more celebrata celebration fatigue. I know my hands are sorta getting sore from all the clapping. Um, <laughs> and it's so good to see just students thriving in all aspects of what we do here at Hutterd and Central. And so we're gonna highlight a little bit more of that uh, with this, the work of the science department. And I was thinking about the last time I was invited to come and talk about our work, uh, which seemed like it wasn't that long ago, but it was last January actually, so almost a year ago. And we started um, by really talking about what our goals were. And our goals, of course, trickle and cascade down from the board's goals. And they have to do with um, the well-being of all of our students, equity and inclusivity, and <clears throat> what that begins to look like in science learning environments. So our goals have been maintaining equitable, equitable and inclusive classroom environments. We've been working to uh, find opportunities to personalize students' learning experience um, and help them to better identify with the science that's being learned, making sure that it's relevant and meaningful to them in their own lives, and also looking for opportunities to increase representation and cultural relevance um, across the curriculum. So what that looks like in science classrooms is um, we've, been, we've been working hard to use phenomena, natural phenomena, that are locally, culturally, and personally relevant to students to drive sense-making around science experiences and science concepts. Um, we've been paying closer attention to making sure that every student can visualize themselves in the role of a scientist, that that's an opportunity, that's a career path that's open to everyone, not just you know, people in lab coats that they see on TV that may or may not be like them. Uh, and making sure that the experiences that students are having in the, the classroom um, are allowing them to apply scientific knowledge and, con and concepts in ways that are consequential to their own lives. And so what I thought we would do tonight is sort of highlight some of the outstanding work that has been happening in our science classrooms um, in the form of some specific lessons 
that teachers have been uh, putting together, so exemplary lessons, and then the outstanding work of students themselves when engaging in those lessons. So I've invited uh, some of our teachers and students to, to, to come in and showcase that. So we're gonna start um, with chemistry, and I'm gonna turn it over here to Carla Heller. <laughs> Thanks for having us here tonight. Um, this is always a great opportunity to showcase our students' work. Um, one of the questions that we always get asked as teachers is, why do we have to learn this? Right? Why do we have to learn this? Why is this important to me? You know, and, and initially in my early years of, the, of teaching, I just thought this was like some sort of sarcastic teenage comment you know, and, and a demand for, for something. And then I began to realize the older I got and the, the more involved I got in my, my teaching practice that I was like, no, that's really actually a valid concern that they have. They're actually speaking true and I need to listen to what they're saying to me. Um, and so every year I sit down um, and I think about how I can make science relevant to my students. And this year I sat down with Bonnie Jager. She was my um, in-class support um, co-teacher. And we sat down at the beginning of the year and we thought, okay, how can we, you know, get students a bit excited about chemistry, right? And one of the things we came up with together was um, a lesson on um, chemistry. In our first unit, we talk about metric conversions and branches of chemistry and structure. Um, and so we took them to Dunkin' Donuts. And we walked over, we did a field trip. Um, our principal graciously allowed us to take field trips, <laughs> right? And so we did that, and um, it was awesome. You know, we took a walk out of the classroom, and we sat down, and we had a snack together. But if you look at the, the um, screen, we also did some chemistry while we were there and learned some science, and we saw how we could make that relevant to our own lives, um, something that they do every day. So that was one thing. Um, and then the next... Um, time we sat down together. This was a collaboration with myself and Bonnie Jager and our um, media specialists, um, Jessica Amelie and Emily Ford. Um, and while, you know, the idea was something that I came up with in having students relate a scientist to their own lives and their own cultural background, I really didn't know where to go with it from there. And I even sat down with Mr. Uh, Dr. Hall and said the same thing. And I was like, I don't, how do I structure this? This is what I want to do. How do I make this happen? And so um, we all, it was a very collaborative effort. We all came up with this together. Um, and we decided that we would have our students choose a scientist to research from their cultural background. Um, and that they also had to bring in a show and tell item from their cultural background um, to share with our class. And so I have um, a couple of things here to show you. This was our, from the IMC, our um, media specialists, Jess and Emily. They helped put together a jumping off point for our students. So when we went to the IMC, they had a place to start and to start looking for something. And so we had, um, they put together a project guide for us, which was awesome and amazing. Um, and the students really found it useful. Um, and I did bring a student with me today. So I brought Matt, you can come on up. You can talk about your experience a little bit. There you go. All right, so uh, the scientist I did was Cho Joseph Priestley. And um, it's, he basically discovered carbon dioxide alongside Benjamin Franklin. And um, basically the connection I made with me was that he was a preacher in England, and um, I'm also a very religious person. I also brought a prayer book, um, and he was a preacher in 1766, and the book is also very old. If I can check it. It was from my, let's see, great, 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 great grandfather. Can't find the date, but it's somewhere in the 1800s. Um, but yeah, that was basically my connection with it, um, and yeah, it was just, uh, yeah, that was my connection. 
Thanks, Matt. Appreciate you stopping by tonight. It's great. Thank you. Um, so another one of our students, she couldn't be here today, Samantha. Um, she's actually in Mexico. <laughs> um, <laughs> she, was, she was going to see some family, and she wasn't able to make it tonight. But she put together a, a great project about a scientist that she made a connection to. Um, she talked about her quinceanera, and she um, brought in some photos of her celebration. Um, and so we all learned a little bit more about her as well through this project. And I think, was that the end of my slides here, I believe? Yes, that's, that's it for me. So thank you very much, I appreciate it. Cheryl. Thank you. <laughs> Good evening, um, my name is Cheryl Sean, and I'm one of the biology teachers here. And what we did in our class this year, um, about a year ago, I applied to be part of a research program, which you all generously um, approved for me. And over the summer, I did some uh, professional development, and um, it's with a program called Planting Science. Um, so on the screen behind you is the, the goals of Planting Science. So Planting Science, it's a collaboration with students, teachers, and scientists. Um, it was a partnership founded in 2005. And their goal is to facilitate relationships with students and science mentors. And we were able to do this through online asynchronous conversation. Um, and so in our class, students were teamed up and they were assigned a scientist mentor that they um, collaborated with throughout this part of our curriculum, throughout this module. Um, the the um, research project, oops, sorry, that I was um, a part of and therefore my students were a part of was called Planting Science, Digging Deeper F2. And so it was actually a, a second year of this research project. And um, it was funded by the National Science Foundation. It was a collaboration with the Botanical Society of America, um, BSCS Science Learning, and University of Colorado, Colorado Springs. And what their goal was to, um, they developed a module of curriculum for us to follow. And um, included in this was not only um, some guided inquiry activities, but also an open inquiry activities for the students to do and, and the collaboration with the science mentor. Okay. Um, this was the second year of the research. So um, they were trying to, they found in the first year that it was successful that this curriculum helped improve student understanding. Um, and we were studying photosynthesis and respiration. And um, it was successful. And this year they're trying to recreate and uh, replicate the results of that. Okay. So the module that we used was called Power of Sunlight. And there's five lessons um, included in it. And instead of including a lot of lecture, it was more guided inquiry and investigation where students did experiments to kind of learn about um, photosynthesis and cellular respiration and how the plant works. Okay. Um, and so in the end, our fifth lesson was an open inquiry where the students were able to um, choose what they wanted to learn about photosynthesis and cellular respiration and they designed their own experiment and carried it out and um, analyzed the data and came to conclusions. So I have a couple examples on the screen of different teams, what they chose, this team chose to investigate color of light and um, photosynthesis, and you can see how their interactions with their science mentor. So each class, as they uh, move through this project, they would write about it um, to their mentor. Their mentor would then write back and ask them questions to kind of encourage them and support them as they move through the project. Okay. Um, another group tested different types of plants okay, um, in their investigation. Okay. And I'm very happy to um, have a team with me from our class. Um, this team, um, all the students participated and um, completed the project. And this team was nominated by one of our science liaisons that was part of um, uh, the planting science team for a STAR project nomination. So what that is, is that um, out of all the teachers in the country that participated in this research project, 
Um, they all carried out the same thing and their students did projects as well. And our team was nominated as a star project um, out of all these other ones. And they, uh, we found out last Friday that they won the star project award. So um, they do get recognition and a prize. And they will be featured on the Planting Science site as a star project for this um, uh, module. So um, I'm happy to invite up Ryan Bellick, Justin Alvarado Rivera, Brooke Hutchinson, and Amelia Peroni. And I'm going to have them talk about their project, which is displayed um, on the screen behind you. So, Hello. Um, so as you know, there were many different experiments that we did in this module, and our last one was open-ended. So in our past experiments, we uh, ended up looking at the pH of the solution that the leaves were in to see if oxygen was released during photosynthesis, which we, is how we found out that it was. Um, and that brought up the question that if, that if the pH of the solution that the leaf is in changes, would the rate of photosynthesis change as well? Um, we believe that if we uh, lower or make, bring the pH up of the solution, the rate of photosynthesis would decrease because um, the pH would impact the hydrogen ion gradient in the thylakoid of the leaf cell, which would then cause the electron transport chain and ATP synthase to slow down, which would also slow down the rate of photosynthesis. To do this experiment, we started with three cups, one with a high pH by adding sodium hydroxide and baking soda, one with low pH by adding sulfuric acid and baking soda, and one with a neutral uh, pH by adding just baking soda. We then uh, had three cups. Um, we put uh, leaves in a syringe with those solutions. We then vacuumed out all the air so that the leaves were filled with those solutions. We then put them back into the containers with the solution and put them under light to see how they reacted to the different pHs. Um, in the experiment, we saw the results that photosynthesis has an optimal pH of seven. So when the pH increased or decreased, the rate of photosynthesis lowered because it wasn't the optimal pH. So in conclusion, we found that the neutral pH solution had the highest rate of photosynthesis. Uh, good evening. My name is Justin Alvarado. Sen Oops. Oh, he's senior. Oh, I that. <laughs> okay. Um, so for our planting science project, we had a mentor, as Ms. Sean explained, and our mentor was named Dr. Hay. Uh, he acquired his plant science, uh, like nerdy stuff, from his PhD from Cornell University, a great school. But um, our, our, the way our group would communicate with Dr. Hay, as you can see in the presentation behind you or at your paper, is that we would give him updates during our research project. And he would ask us questions and we would respond to his questions, giving, us, giving him updates of, of what we thought was important for him to know and for him to help us. Um, a way we communicated with Dr. Hay was explaining our research, our data results, and also ending off with the joke. As you can see, we think we need to build a good relationship with our mentor. So we ended off with a joke every time, and he would respond with a joke as well. Um, I would like to thank Ms. Sean and Dr. Hall for letting us experience this uh, planting science project, which is lovely because if we didn't uh, experience this, I think we would be lacking an opportunity of learning photosynthesis and what a curriculum is going to be about. And I'd like to thank you guys as well for approving this last year. Even I just found that out like 30 seconds ago. But I'd like to thank you guys. Um, but as I said before, as, we, as I ended my updates, or as we ended our updates with Dr. Hay with the joke, I'd like to end you, the board, um, with the joke as well. And um, what did the father buffalo say to his son? Bye, son. Hi, everybody. My name is Jessica Doyle, and I'm one of the biomedical sciences teachers here at Central. 
Um, I've had the distinct pleasure of working on the curriculum with this group uh, and teaching the current class that's in year three. I taught them their first year. That first year, we talked a lot about public health. And so as they came up into the, uh, the current course, their year three, I was really trying to make the, the conversation that we were having more relevant to them. So I came around to our, our nervous system unit and we've been doing uh, lessons on neurotransmitters and how neurons communicate with each other. And um, typically what I've done in the past is I have done this lesson by looking at addiction and drugs. Um, but I sat down with Mr. Hall and we were actually getting ready to do one of my observations. It was my planned observation. And I said to him, I was like, listen, I really wanna do something that's different. I wanna make this a lot more relevant. Here's my idea. I was thinking about taking this from a perspective of looking at how cell phone addiction and um, social media tends to have an impact on dopamine release. There's been a lot of conversation about this over the course of the past few years. Nothing totally conclusive, so it seemed to be a, a conversation point, something that we could talk about. Um, so I started the lesson this time around with a, uh, a technology tool called Mentimeter, and I had the kids, I developed this question as kind of like a where are you starting from? Uh, and I asked them, is technology addictive? And if you look at the image, you know, it, it's interesting. It's a very interactive technology. And all 18 kids sitting in the class that day all kind of put their bubbles floating over to yes. Yes, it is. There was no no's. There was no maybes. Um, but I wanted them to kind of sit through this lesson and think about and reflect on their own personal behaviors. So I designed an experiment and I made them my guinea pigs and I asked them to kind of think about what they were doing as they were doing it. And in the lesson, um, as we were talking about neurotransmitters, I had prompted them with um, questions first, like what are your feel good neurotransmitters? We had already talked about this. What are the things that you know are positive about social media and cell phone use? What are the drawbacks or negative factors to cell phone use and social media? Um, and then I had them uh, take, I designed an experiment where I had them kind of take their cell phones and put it in front of them and I asked them to just leave it there while I showed them three lengthy TED Talk videos about dopamine and cell phone use, which wasn't the most engaging videos, but that was totally intentional. So. As they watched this, I asked them every time they got the urge to pick up their cell phone, they needed to reflectively journal about it, put a tick mark in, write down their emotions, how are they feeling in that moment. And so they did this over the course of about 20 minutes. And you know, as I sat there, I was watching all of the different reactions in the classroom, and I had some students on both ends of the spectrum. Um, some students who were like, tick mark, tick mark tick mark, tick mark, you know, and journaling what they were feeling. And then I had other students who were like, I normally I'm okay, but now that you told me I can't do it, I really want to, you know. So we had a conversation about that. And um, I asked them after we were all, all done with it, um, what are the most compelling arguments or statistics that the, the videos that we watched provided? Some of them couldn't even tell me because they were too busy thinking about how they were feeling about not being able to pick up their cell phones. Um, I asked what they disagreed with. I asked how much control they think they have over their smartphones and their cell phone use. And I also asked them to kind of think, think about it back from year one when we talked about community health and public health and epidemics. You know, from that public health perspective, it was more of a rhetorical question, but whose responsibility is it to manage personal cell phone use? And I used the Mentimeter to have them kind of think about, you know, where that responsibility lies. Um, if you also look at the, at the slide, the last question I asked them was part of their reflection, which was how much time do you spend on your cell phone during a, an average day? And um, of my class of 18, nine of them said over five hours a day. So that was kind of part of the reflective telling and I wanted them to kind of think about it and we talked about it again the following class as far as you know, what the dopamine 
um, actions are and how this has an impact on them. It was a really interesting lesson. I've got three students with me today. I've got Olivia Gioffre, Sienna DiPaolo, and Anna Gabriella Rutman here to kind of discuss their experiences with you. Um, so I couldn't really tell you what the videos were about, <laughs> except the last one. I remember the guy talking was saying like, I remember one thing and he was just like, I don't have social media, and I was like, I don't know how. I mean, I live on social media. I have like six hours of screen time a day, so I'm like spending that on social media, and I had like five or six ticks like anytime I wanted to pick up my phone. I ended up putting on my Apple Watch and just looking at every single time like I got a notification. So, I mean, when you tell like someone not to do something, they're going to want to do it even more, so... I don't know, it was like eye-opening, yeah. Hi everyone, yes, this experiment was definitely eye-opening. I do not like the fact that I'm part of that five plus hour group, but the experiment was fun because I put my phone down, but during the second video, it was very long and very boring. And I resorted to other options like fidgeting with my hands or sleeping. I could not, my attention span could not handle that video. But writing down the ticks helped catch myself. And this experiment helped me to realize like doing other things is better than being addicted to my phone. So I've tried to catch myself not going on my phone and doing other things to keep myself occupied. Hi, I'm Anna, and it was very eye-opening, I would agree. Um, I remember that as soon as Mrs. Doyle told us that we couldn't go on our phones, I immediately wanted to. So I was one of those people that said I was fine until you said I couldn't. And I realized it was because I had my phone as kind of a safety net. And um, especially during that second video, my eyes started to close a little bit, I won't lie. His monotone voice definitely put me to sleep a little bit. And it made me think about how, because we're on our phone so much on things like Instagram Reels or TikTok or YouTube Shorts that are such short videos, which Mrs. Doyle pointed out in class, it actually shortens our attention span. And so it made me think about all the negative long-term effects that technology can have on us. All right, thank you so much. Okay, so that is a number of experiences. Um, the other thing that was interesting as an observer in that classroom that didn't come up was the discussions about not just do we think technology is addictive, but why, right? If, like, how do you substantiate that claim with this idea of, in this new learning they had about neurotransmitters. And the sophistication of those conversations was really impressive. Um, it, <clears throat> so just to highlight that as well. Uh, so there's a little snapshot into our efforts at personalizing learning, um, whether it be uh, open inquiry, whether it be students participating in, a, in an experiment about something that they clearly care a whole lot about, like their cell phones, um, <laughs> um, or even trying to understand how the metric system um, relates to their lives as they take a trip down to Dunkin' Donuts and calculate, you know, how much sugar is in the snack that they're about to have while they draw uh, the chemical structure of caffeine. Like, those kinds of things were, were, are, are really cool. So. I want to open it up to questions. Any questions you have at this time? Make make sure you put a mark every time you want to check your phone. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think he's got your beat. I, think he's like, <laughs> I don't have a question, but just want to thank you, Dr. Hall and Mrs. Heller, Mrs. Shaw, and Mrs. Doyle for coming, and the amazing students. They bring such life to the curriculum for us, so thank you for doing that. It was a great presentation. Yeah. Yeah, 
when I was a very young teacher, very young history teacher, two veteran teachers, one a science teacher, one a history teacher, arguing. You know, science is just memorizing stuff. No, science is a process. History is just, no, history is a process. And at that time, both of those things were kind of true. And when I got here, I found in the science department what a great leap uh, you all have taken away from what had been in our profession a very traditional approach. And same in our social studies department, by the way, which you'll hear about another night. Uh, but uh, fantastic work um, and, and just wonderful to hear uh, the students' conclusions from all of that, too. So thank you. All right. Thanks. Thank you. All right, I will finish off with a couple of things. We have a little bit more celebrating to do tonight, uh, so don't, don't get too comfortable. Um, I like the hat tonight, Ricky. You got a good hat tonight. <laughs> uh, so uh, I'll go through a couple of um, organizational items really quickly, and then I'll come back to the first couple, which are, I think, the most important things that we're going to do on the agenda tonight. Uh, our election results are captured here as, as an informational item. You don't have to take action on that, but those have been made official since our last meeting. I think we shared them as an informational item last time, but it hadn't been certified yet. So they're here on the agenda again uh, as certified. And again, congratulations to our three uh, uh, board members, uh, Mrs. Kellogg returning, and Mrs. Gong and Mrs. Santangelo joining us in early July. Notice the very next item, number four, what did I say? July, July sorry, January. Um, notice it's, it's too cold out. <laughs> notice, the, ne the very next item is uh, a change in schedule uh, because of just some of the organizational and logistical cha challenges of coming right out of the holiday into our reorg meeting. We have a grace period in which to hold that meeting, so we've asked the board if we can move that to the fourth just so that we can make sure everybody can be here. Um, reorg is a very important meeting and then January 22nd is the original date that's already on the schedule right that's it yeah so just the change there changing January 2nd canceling January 2nd doing that meeting instead on January 4th there's a HIB action to take here as well um, so on number five the three HIBs that I uh, reported in closed session last month are here for your action and then lastly I just want to um, and need to celebrate the service of, of two of our deport, uh, departing members, um, both of whom have resolutions here honoring their incredible service and uh, uh, their, just, their selfless and tireless dedication to the work of the district. Uh, Mr. Davidson, Raritan Township joins the board um, with years of experience in Flemington Raritan as a Board of Education member and a board president. So he came on board, he was a rare board member who came on board with experience. So it was, it was amazing uh, because we dove right into conversations that I thoroughly enjoyed and which I'll miss. Um, how, how, what, what are the best ideas for making Central and helping Central become a better, more innovative, uh, and just more inclusive place. And I've always appreciated those conversations, Bruce. Also always appreciated the ways in which you've just been able to bring focus uh, in committee meetings and here at the table. Um, just miss, we'll miss that wisdom and miss that experience and we'll just miss you here on the board. So thank you for your service. Uh, and then Mrs. Hughes. Sorry, let, me make a comment. Let, me, let me, yeah, go ahead, make a comment. Go ahead. I want to say that my tenure on the board has been extremely rewarding. I've been on two other boards of education. You knew about one in Flemington, but actually he's on the board in Somerset, New Jersey. I don't know. But anyway. I did not. Okay. Uh, bring your microphone a little closer. I did not know you were on the Somerset board no, as well. I, so I was for, for four years. And uh, so I felt that... Uh, I knew some pretty good boards of education and districts, but Central outpaces them all. Uh, upon coming on the board, I had nothing but real cooperation from the board members and the president, all eager to use new ideas and to communicate their ideas and ask for evaluation. And I enjoyed going back and forth and getting new ideas. Totally, um, along with uh, the board members' cooperation has been uh, the efforts of uh, Dr. Moore, who, uh, in my opinion, is one of the better, or maybe I would, should say the best superintendent I've met and actually worked with, and I'm, uh, uh, it was extremely rewarding, and his administration of the district 
is so se seems so seamless. And the final thing I have to say is about the district and the teachers and the supervisors. There's an attitude here of can do. It's a very positive attitude. In fact, if you ask for information, often not only what you ask for, but stuff that you might need is anticipated. And it is really interesting to have active input, not just, oh, here's what you wanted, but here's what you wanted, did you ever think of? Or would you like this to be added to it? This attitude from everybody in the district, whether it's uh, the, it, on the teacher or the advisor level, all the way up to superintendent and uh, uh, the staff that Ms. Cancelosi Hayes runs, that group of uh, curriculum uh, people, it's just really rewarding. So I'm sorry to leave because of that, but um, the thing I can say is that the staff that you have here is excellent, will continue to be that way, and I wish good luck to the new board as it comes in. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> Mrs. Hughes uh, joined the board, 2018 joined the board, uh, and um, has been a rock, uh, a, a voice of reason, a supporter of our school, our students, our staff. Um, champion of all of those folks, champion of our students and our school. Uh, she's been quite simply uh, the, the most effective and, and most impactful board president with whom I've had the opportunity to work through my career. And uh, I'm just indebted to, to all that she's done here uh, to help us help the students and the teachers and the staff do, do all the wonderful things um, with our kids. So I'll miss your steady hand and your leadership, Mrs. Hughes, but I know uh, it's had an impact and it will have a legacy. So do know that. Um, and I've said it to others. Uh, did you want to share? You made, a, you made some comments last yeah, time. But I, I made my weepy comments last <laughs> month, so I'll just say thank you. Okay. So, and I've said it to others um, who've left this table, but I want you both to know that it is a comment that I reserve. Uh, but your, your work, your caring, your dedication made our work better. Uh, and uh, I can't ask for more. From, from service uh, from our community members. So thank you both so much. Thank, thank you. you. Um, all right, so uh, do note uh, Mrs. Hughes and Mr. Uh, Davidson have uh, resolutions on the agenda detailing their time here, but let's also remember uh, Mr. Davidson's capping a long career of public service on boards of education, and I want that to be recognized here as well tonight. Um, so we'll need, uh, as I complete my report, just to pick through this, we'll need um, some motions on, um, where am I? We'll need motions on number, on F1, F2, F2 um, F3 is just informational, four. four and five. So one, two, four, and five. And with that, I turn it back over to you, Mrs. Hughes. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Moore. Uh, Mrs. Kellogg, could I ask you to read Re F1, the resolution for my board member recognition, and move that. Thank you. Mrs. Lisa Hughes, whereas your personal commitment to quality education, your valued participation in establishing effective policies, and your readiness to render services in seeking educational excellence, have contributed immeasurably to the progress of our school system. Be it resolved that on behalf of your colleagues, teachers, and students, we thank you for your dedicated service and wish you good health and happiness in years to come. Lisa served as a Board of Education member from 2018 through 2023, serving as Board President in 2022 and 2023. She served on the Communications Committee in 2023, or sorry, um, the Curriculum Committee in 2018, the Personnel Committee from 2018 to 2021, chairing it from 2019 to 2021. She chaired the Student Life and Program Committee in 2022, and she served as the Board Professional Learning Ad Hoc Committee in 2021 to 2022, the NCAA Negotiations Ad Hoc Committee in 2021 and 2023, the NCEA Negotiations Ad Hoc Committee 2018, 2021 through 2022, the HCRHS Reopening Ad Hoc Committee in 2020 through 2022, 
and has served on the Racism, Equity, and Diversity Ad Hoc Committee from 2020 to 2021. Lisa, we thank you for your service. Thank you, Ms. Kellogg. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, can I have a roll call vote, please? Mr. Davidson? <clears throat> Mr. Fowler? Yes. Mrs. Kellogg? Yes. Mrs. Duggan? Yes. Mrs. Peterson? Yes. And Mrs. Hughes? I'll abstain on that one. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Bruce Davidson, whereas your personal commitment to quality education, your valued participation in establishing effective policies, and your readiness to render services in seeking educational excellence have contributed immeasurably to the progress of our school system. Be it resolved that on behalf of your colleagues, teachers, and students, we thank you for your dedicated service and wish you good health and happiness in your years to come. Mr. Davidson served as a Board of Education member from 2020 to 2023, served on the Operations and Transportation Committee in 2020 and 2022 to 2023, the Personnel Committee from 2020 to 2021, the Student Life and Program Committee 2020 to 2021, and chaired it in 2022 and 2023. I'm sorry, 2022 into 2023. Uh, also served on the Board Professional Learning Ad Hoc Committee 2021 to 2022, and served on the Reopening Ad Hoc Committee 2020 to 21 and 21 to 2022. I would like to move that resolution. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, can I have a roll call, please? Mr. Davidson? That's nay. Mr. Fowler? Yes. Mrs. Kellogg? Yes. Mrs. Duggan? Yes. Mrs. Peterson? Yes. And Mrs. Hughes? Yes, with All pleasure yes. and gratitude, Mr. Davidson. <laughs> can I have a motion, please? Uh, for the revised meeting schedule for the 23-24 school year, changing the reorganization meeting from January 2nd to January 4th. I move item F4, the revised meeting dates for January 2024. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, can I have a roll call vote, please? Mr. Davidson? Yes. Mr. Fowler? Yes. Mrs. Kellogg? Yes. Mrs. Duggan? Yes. Mrs. Peterson? Yes. And Mrs. Hughes? Yes. All yes motion carries. Thank you. And lastly, can I have a motion, please, to affirm the administration's disposition on Hibs 2, 3, and 4? So moved. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, can I have a roll call vote, please? Mr. Davidson? Yes. Mr. Fowler? Yes. Mrs. Kellogg? Yes. Mrs. Duggan? Yes. Mrs. Peterson? Yes. And Mrs. Hughes? Yes. Oh, yes, motion carries. Thank you, Mrs. Spitzer. We'll move into committee reports. We're a little changed up this month. Mr. Fowler, you're doing student life, correct? That's correct. Thank you. All right. Good evening, everybody. Um, I only have five items on student life program committee to discuss. Uh, first is three tuition and transportation <laughs> related contracts um, for students during 2023 and 2024 school years. One from uh, Lakeview School, one from the Midland School, and one to Burlington County Special Services School I'm District. Sorry, Mr. Fowler, can I just ask, did we miss public comment? Before we get into voting anymore. Where was Thank that? You, We're a mess. <laughs> we rolled right into the organizational item. Oh. Yeah. Thank you for pointing that out. I'll interrupt you, Mr. Fowler, to see if we have public comment on any of the agenda items, any action items on the agenda. There will be a second public comment, as usual, at the end for general comments. Anyone here to speak on action items on the agenda? Okay. Thank you, Mrs. Peterson. Go ahead, Mr. Fowler. Thank you. Um, so as I was saying, there is a tuition transportation related contracts um, on our agenda, three of them, as I've called out, tuition is as noted on our agenda. We have five early graduating students for June of 2024. Um, all of their details are attached to your agenda for review. We have two second readings, one for eligible, eligibility of residents, non-resident students, and one for education of homeless children and youths. Uh, we reviewed this in committee, talked about it. Um, no changes since last month, so that's why we're at second reading. 
Then we have a bridge year pilot program, which we are moving to abolish. This will be the second reading as well. Um, not much discussion, just a review of it and that uh, it has lived out its life. So this will be um, removing it from our policy book. And then finally, um, we do have an overnight field, sh field trip for the ski and board club um, to Manchester, Vermont, Okemo and, or Okemo and Stratton Ski Resorts. Um, they will be paid by the students and or the families. So I'd like to move items one through five. Thank you, Mr. Fowler. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, can I have a roll call, please? Mr. Davidson? Yes. Mr. Fowler? Yes. Mrs. Kellogg? Yes. Mrs. Duggan? Yes. Mrs. Peterson? Yes. And Mrs. Hughes? Yes. All yes, motion carries. Thank you. Mrs. Duggan, you're going to report on O&T? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I thought I was going to get a simple one this month, but we, uh, we have 14 items to move. So um, the first would be the financial reports. Um, ending at the month of October. We also have the invoices and transfers for the end of December here. <coughs> we have a second reading to um, abolish policies 8540 and 8550, which are the school nutrition policies that we have, and they're going to be replaced by the second reading policy 8500 called food services. Number six, we have to move. Um, this is basically the students that we're sending over to the Hunterdon County Vocational School District for 2023-24. And I just wanted to share like a little information about this. These are the four programs that um, our students have access to. Um, there's 119 students that are gonna be attending these programs. And from last year to this year, that number's increased by 20%. So it's gone from 98 students to 119 students. And this is actually um, costing the district 1.138 million this year for the tuition. Number seven, um, we have a shared service agreement with, um, it's, um, Central to Jersey program for the recruitment of diverse educators shared service agreement that we'd like to move to approve. Number eight is the budget calendar. So the budget um, planning season has already kicked off and um, we'll be wrapping that up in May, which is gonna come before we know it. <clears throat> so number nine is the sale of some buses that we've talked about the last couple of months. So this is the final um, re moving to approve the following transportation vehicles to the highest bidder, $71,000 for two of those um, small buses that, that we're gonna be getting rid of because of high mileage. Number 10 is to approve the bus evacuation drills that were conducted on October 27th, 2023. Number 11 is to graciously accept a donation of $250 by Morgan Stanley to the Hunterdon Central High School Investing Club. And number 12 is a professional service contract for um, a, a nursing contract. We're constantly in need of having um, different nurses on staff for students who need the care. So that's what that's all about. Hang on, I'm catching up. Okay, number 13, oh, we actually have 15 this month. Number 13 is to accept the full year 23 annual comprehensive financial report. And this is, um, I wanna note here that the audit, audit recommendations, there were none, corrective actions, none. So well done, Heather, on another year of outstanding audits. Number 14 is something that we have to do now once every three years ongoing, and this is renewing the participation of the school's health insurance fund, the SHIF. And so um, I'd like to move to approve um, renewing the participation in SHIF. That would be number 14. 
And then number 15 also comes with it. It's the indemnity and trust agreement that, that comes along with SHIFT. So with that, I'd like to move items 1 through 15. Thank you, Mrs. Duggan. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? I just want to share one thought about the SHIF, which uh, is a reminder that, you know, our, our participation in the SHIF, uh, along with our partnership with Brown & Brown, our brokers, has really stemmed the increases in health insurance costs for our district uh, down to single digits in many years, um, and even flat in some cases. So um, that's been a, an instrumental way to continue to affect good stewardship for our, our community and at the same time provide uh, really excellent benefits for our employees. State health benefits uh, as a comparison um, for similarly priced programs jumped up what percentage this year? 15.8% last year and we saw an increase of 3.9%. So this has been a fantastic um, uh, decision of this. It's turned out to have been a fantastic decision of, of the boards and the business offices over the past several years. So thank you for that, Heather. Any further comments? Mr. If Donald? I could, yeah. Um, I just wanted to highlight again the comprehensive financial report. So as, as Bruce said in, in his piece, um, so many great things are done by the administration, teachers, and staff at the school. Um, to only have this comprehensive financial report be a 30-second blurb on an agenda is, is an understatement at best. Um, it's probably a 300-page book. Um, I'll admit I didn't get to the entire thing over the weekend, <laughs> but I certainly did drill through a lot of it, and um, that is to um, a great commendation to a, a direct delivery to our home. Um, on Friday afternoon once this book was prepared. So it did give us time to look through it through the weekend. And again, um, kudos to you and your team, Mrs. Spitzer, that, that you put this together, that it goes through with no recommendations and no corrective action plans. Um, you know, none is a simple word for the amount of effort that goes into <laughs> that. So um, it's, it's a true testimony to the efforts that are going on behind the scenes at the school and allows us to really be able to be a very effective board and supporting everything that happens here. So kudos and thank you. Here, here. Yes. You want, you want not only a BA who can do that, but a BA who is embarrassed when you talk <laughs> about it, right? <laughs> Any further comments? Hearing none, Mrs. Spitzer, can I have a roll call vote, please? Mr. Fowler? Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Davidson? Yes. Mrs. Duggan? Yes. Mrs. Kellogg? Yes. Mrs. Peterson? Yes. And Mrs. Hughes? Yes. Oh, yes, motion carries. Thank you. Personnel committee, Mrs. Kellogg? Please. Yes, we have 15 items this month. Um, the first one is four retirements, and I would like to note that the four retirements represent over 80 years of experience that are leaving the district. Um, we are incredibly grateful to um, Mrs. Armolino, Mrs. Colton, Mrs. Roth, and Mr. Schneebel? Schneebly. Schneebly. Yeah. Um, for all of their service to the district. Uh, item two is appointments uh, under contractual salary. Um, we do or we're, we continue to be successful in filling positions and um, you know we are a district that attracts excellent talent which is, is very good. Um, number three is an appointment uh, for contractual hourly work for a, a new bus driver. Uh, number four is an hourly appointment for an HCTV student tech. Um, you'll notice that that tech is also on um, under item six. Six, no, it is number oh, seven. seven. You'll also see them under item seven, um, which is the adjustment for the rates uh, minimum wage for 2024. Um, we do have appointments of some substitute teachers. Uh, item six is appointment of the sh of chaperones. So we're asking for a blanket appointment of chaperones for student activities um, to avoid interim approval. Uh, item seven is minimum wage increase. Item eight is uh, co-curricular advisors, volunteers that are unpaid um, for the robotics club and for Model UN. Um, item nine is Schedule C advisors uh, for student, a student activities assistant. Um, item 10 is professional development. And then we do have policies on first reading. Um, essentially, these are 
uh, related to the new sick leave rules um, and additions and deletions that are required for all of those policies. Um, we are also looking to, uh, item 12 is to abolish policies also related to, to sick leave. Um, item 13 is abolishing an operational assistant in the human resources department. Item 14 is to approve a position as a personnel secretary. Um, and that really is to help us align um, job titles with actual functions in the business office more appropriately. Um, and then item 15 is we're creating a position for a personal secretary. So I move items, um, uh, is it I? <laughs> I1 through I15. Thank you, Mrs. Kellogg. I have a motion, do I have a second? Second. Motion and a second, is, is there any comment? Just on, on number 13, just I want to make sure everyone understands that's an empty position currently, so we aren't losing a staff member there. Uh, and then 14 and 15, as Mrs. Kellogg said, are just retooling that position so that it's closer to the functions that we need. And so you're, you're uh, revising the job description, then creating the position. And I would hope <coughs> then uh, next month or soon after, we'd, we'd have a candidate to offer to you for uh, approval into, into that position. Thank you, Dr. Moore. Any further comments? Mrs. Spitzer, can I have a roll call vote, please? Mrs. Kellogg? Yes. Mr. Fowler? Yes. Mr. Davidson? Yes. Mrs. Peterson? Yes. Mrs. Duggan? Yes. And Mrs. Hughes? Yes. All yes, motion carries. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. O'Donnell is not here tonight, so I, I will move uh, to approve the following policy, which on second reading, which is the student uh, attire and dress code. I know there was some discussion at the table last month, and I saw various emails going back and forth and suggestions and changes to that policy. So it is here tonight um, for second read and adoption. So I'd like to move that. Is there a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Uh, only that um, just the process there uh, after the conversation at the table here, uh, well, in the IMC last month, we took that back to the committee, uh, worked on some additional language, um, passed that through all the students who were involved um, to address just the concern about clarity in that one line, which we all felt was, was a good concern. Um, so the language has changed a little bit here, but the substance didn't feel as if it was changing enough to us to knock it back to first read. So uh, we ultimately just allowed it to move forward as a recommendation to you for second reading. Um, so uh, there it is, uh, as, as amended from its previous version. Thank you, Dr. Moore. Any further comments? Hearing none, can I have a roll call vote, please? Mr. Davidson? Yes. Mrs. Duggan? Yes. Mr. Fowler? Yes. Mrs. Kellogg? Yes. Mrs. Peterson? Yes. And Mrs. Hughes? Yes. All yes, motion carries. Thank you. Mrs. Kellogg, do you have a communications committee report? Uh, no communi communications committee report, but we do have the policy on second read. Okay. So um, we did have a few uh, structural comments. Um, so the text didn't change, but we did reorganize uh, the definitions um, per comments from Mrs. Peterson. So I move um, approval of the policy on second reading and then also um, abolish uh, a policy on second reading. Thank you. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion on those motions? Hearing none, can I have a roll call vote, please? Mr. Davidson? Yes. Mrs. Duggan? Yes. Mr. Fowler? Yes. Mrs. Kellogg? Yes. Mrs. Peterson? Yes. And Mrs. Hughes? Yes. Oh, yes, motion carries. Thank you. Um, additional board business, do we have any other committee or liaison reports? Yes, Mr. Fowler, you're smiling. <laughs> um, so first, let me apologize for my delayed attendance tonight. Um, some of you may know that it was because we were actually meeting as the JTC members group um, in our boardroom during, uh, before this meeting and during the beginning of it. So again, apologies to all the students who I was not here for um, the accolades and the celebrations. I certainly would have liked to, um, but we have had some challenges with JTC over the past two months that I definitely want to bring to the attention to the board. Um, first of all is um, Dr. Moore 
uh, Mrs. Spitzer and um, the administrative team from Flemington Raritan have been working feverishly, diligently, as well as our transportation director um, to make plans to manage the additional requirements of the extended preschool program that has uh, been approved by Flemington Raritan School District. Um, it, I'm going to try to get all the numbers right. Um, it requires 65 extra students, and once we saw all of the plans of routes, um, it, it shows a shortfall of around 13 vans. Um, the vans are not large buses. They're actually roughly five students per van because these are preschoolers that need to have car seats or some sort of safety restraint. And that's been the challenge is, is finding the best way to fill that void in a very timely manner because their preschool program is tentatively scheduled to kick off January 16th. Um, so unfortunately, there's been a squeeze between when the state provided this uh, as, as an acceptable plan forward for Flemington Raritan, their ability to put their lottery together, get everything approved, and get the, the full roster of all the students. Um, it continues to be a bit of a challenge, quite frankly, and we're going to go into January with um, some action items, definitely, for the, uh, the new board that will, that will be facing this. Um, but I did have a pretty lengthy conversation with the board members um, from Flemington Raritan on different options, laying out the plans, and they're going to be taking that back to their administrative team tonight to see what can be done uh, in the upcoming days. The challenges that this has brought to the forefront um, have also shown that the historical structure of the JTC um, is not highly efficient and really well-rounded to persevere through these types of challenges. And so um, the, the members of the JTC from 100 and Central have really come to a bit of a, an agreement, even though we haven't um, voted and moved on it, that uh, a hard look at restructuring the JTC is necessary in the new year. Um, there will most likely be some costs that we'll have to incur and Flemington Rent will have to incur as a result of that in order to make sure that um, we have driver's negotiation next year, that we don't lose pace off of that um, and other related activities. But we'll bring more detail um, to you in January as well as probably because there's negotiations involved in some of the executive session conversations. Um, so I just wanted to share that with the public, share that with all of you as board members, um, that we are going to have a lot of conversations in early January um, in order to have some actions for the board in the January um, business meeting um, to keep pace with the preschool program as much as possible for Flemington Raritan. That was a mouthful and a little bit of a ramble just because it wasn't prepared. We're still putting it all together. but. Um, Again, I'm, I'm available for any questions during or after our meeting. Thank you, Mr. Fowler. Do you have any other? Oh, sorry. December 2nd was the second uh, of this year's uh, delegates assembly. Um, oh, I can't hear me. OK, sorry, I'm usually not quiet. Uh, we had that on uh, December 2nd. There were approximately 100 board members from across the state. Um, it, one le it was lengthy because one lesson is even with a parliamentarian and about five NJSBA lawyers in residence, Robert's rules of orders can still be a little bit tricky and trying to figure out how to word certain things to vote on them. So uh, just some news from the NJSBA uh, now has a BA in residence. Um, you know, they have attorney on re in residence. Now they have a BA in residence. Um, it also has a central counties activity coordinator, which I guess proves that there is a central New Jersey. I'm not sure if that was ever officially decided. Um, the NJSBA is going to be undertaking federal level advocacy. And Dr. Purnell, who is the executive director, will be hosting a Q&A podcast from 12 to 1 on the second Wednesday of each month, where board members can be able to submit questions online to have answered by him. Uh, there were 26 resolutions submitted prior to the cutoff for this uh, DA. Uh, 21 were not submitted to the subcommittees due to procedural concerns. Apparently, about 20 or 21 of those all came from Plainfield BOE and Union. They had a very busy six months, I guess. Um, one of the ones that did come through from them was a cohort classification. This has to do with uh, the classifications under ESSA and NJ SMART. Um, for the graduation rate classification, I guess districts that have a very high level of mobility 
um, have difficulties when students move out of district and they can't verify where they've gone. Um, it can affect their graduation rates and they were seeking to try to advocate for um, some new language so they proposed that uh, the school district should be able to classify students as excluded from cohort once reasonable attempts have been made to confirm that the student has in fact transferred elsewhere either domestically or internationally. Um, that resolution passed. Uh, the second one was a career and technical education teacher certificate requirement, another plain field submission. Um, they're seeking to have um, skilled professionals with limited or no English proficiency to obtain certification to be paired with English speaking co-teachers. Um, I guess this was for the CTE programs. Um, the concern was with the teacher shortage that getting skilled professionals for the CTE programs have been difficult. Um, however, some people pointed out that having to have two teachers in a classroom is not going to help the teacher shortage. Um, the NJSBA did not support this resolution and it, it failed. Um, another one was a from the Essex County Board School Boards Association. Uh, a book selection is what it ended up going down um, under the delegates assembly um, that basically just ensured all instructional materials are age appropriate, complement the district curriculum and student support programs, facilitate critical thinking, further learning, and are congruent with local and community preferences. Um, Board of Education book selection should only restrict access to or exclude books or other learning materials from its curriculum, library, or other support resources following the process that evaluates the book or materials in a manner that is consistent with the constitutional and statutory protections afforded individuals by the state. And that uh, NJSBA encourages local boards to consult with other educational organizations um, and local stakeholders in the selection of curriculum and support materials while retaining its statutory authority over such decisions. And that uh, resolution passed 83 to 17. There was another resolution for, uh, from Warren, Franklin Township and Warren uh, passed the trash, re trash resolution uh, essentially seeking better in support from the state to do more thorough backgrounds into um, upcoming, uh, into potential employees, um, better technology and tools to collect um, information that will limit or prevent physical or emotional abuse of children by school employees. Um, and that passed 97 to three. And then there was uh, a, proposal to amend the NJSBA nominating committee bylaws, which is by the Union County VOTEC. Um, that's kind of gets into a technical thing that probably not many people are interested in, but it passed. It had to pass by two thirds vote. It passed 89 to 11. So that was the um, substance of the delegates assembly in December. Thank you, Mrs. Peterson. Any other committee or liaison reports? Okay. Any additional board business? Can I share two quick yes, things? Uh, one, um, back uh, on the 6th, I was able to attend a County School Boards Association panel. Um, myself, uh, Mr. Lipson from um, Delaware Township, superintendent there, and Dr. Hart from Reddington sat on a panel where we talked about how schools are recovering uh, from sort of COVID and discussing learning gaps. And a lot of our conversation turned toward uh, the health and wellness needs of students as well. And I, I just want to thank Kathy Poria, uh, who is the Delaware Township Board of Ed president, who is also the president of the county chapter for the School Boards Association. The wonderful event, there were about 40 or 50 board members there, including many who were there as brand new members um, finishing their first round of training. So I was able to see Mrs. Gong and Mrs. Santangelo there as well. It's a great event at J.P. Case, and, and I hope they do more uh, of those to bring us all together. Um, the, th the second thing I want to share is something that you're all aware of, but I just want to make sure that I share it at the table and, and, and let you know um, uh, on, on the record. Uh, I emailed you all earlier today. I have accepted a, a position in Mamaroneck, New York, um, and plan to stay uh, with the board uh, and the school until the end of March um, as, I, as I fulfill my contractual obligation to all of you and, and uh, help us get through the budget season and all of those things. Um, this was an incredibly difficult decision to make. I was not looking for an opportunity. Uh, however, um, it was an opportunity that I couldn't refuse uh, for, for all that it will do for my, my family and, and myself. Um, this is a wonderful place, uh, 100 and Central, and I, I often describe it as a place that's uh, worthy of best efforts. 
um, and I just urge you to continue the support that you've shown for the school and uh, to, to urge you now as, as you move forward, um, the school needs your thoughtfulness, it needs your selflessness, it needs your humility and service, and it needs your collaboration with everyone who works here, everyone who comes here to learn every day, but also just with each other. Uh, so please, uh, as we move forward, we'll talk much more. There'll be times for more thoughts and farewells later on, but wanted to let you all know uh, and, and put that on record here tonight. Um, we'll have some quick communications out to the community tonight just to let everybody know. And uh, also, um, you know, I've, I've alerted staff and, and colleagues around the county as well. Uh, so, and again, I'll share more in the coming months, but I wanted to make sure that everybody understood that that was, that was in the cards. So, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Moore. Any uh, additional board business from anyone else? Okay, so we'll move into our second residence forum. This is for general comments. Anything not necessarily on the agenda? Sure, come on up. Yes, of course, please. You have five minutes. If you could please just state your name and your municipality. Thank you. My name is Don Mack. I'm here representing the Hunterdon County Bulldog Detachment of the Marine Corps League, and I'm here to discuss scholarships. Um, we have, two years ago, we started a golf tournament, which we decided the first $6,000 raised would go to scholarships to the five high schools in Hunterdon County and the homeschool Hunterdon County section. Um, we have been getting out to everybody. You know, we've contacted the schools, but my reason for being here is one school has not responded back to us if they're interested, um, which happens to be 100 in Central. Um, we have heard nothing back from them. We've heard from the other schools and everything. Just to let you know that it's for qualified seniors. It would be a $1,000 scholarship to, you know, one to one student for each school and then one for the home school. There in this is another scholarship the Kevin Patrick Bogle Scholarship Fund, where this is all strictly by donation that's done during this golf tournament. Um, the, so there will be an additional, the highest essay of all the selections from the schools will then, instead of getting the $1,000 scholarship, would get this scholarship. Um, and then somebody from that school, the second place, would get their the $1,000 scholarship. Currently, the uh, Kevin Patrick Bogle Memorial Scholarship is at $15,672.80 that one student would get. And we think, you know, we just want to make sure every student in Hunterdon County knows about this. And since we haven't heard anything back from Hunterdon Central, we want to make sure it is on their list so the, stu the senior students, when they get the list of all their scholarships, would be aware of this. Yeah, sir, I'm sorry, what was your name again? Uh, Don Mack. Don, thank you, uh, Mr. Mack, and, and uh, uh, Mr. Brandt, our principal is is sitting behind you there. I'm going to ask him to get your contact. You'll get a call tomorrow, sir. Okay. And I, I thank you for your your patience. Well, actually, uh, I'm, not, I'm just filling in. I'm not. Or on some, the so someone, I'm not, I'm not, I'll, <laughs> you give, can I'll help give more comments. Uh, we have a oh, robust no. uh, scholarship, yeah. local scholarship program here, and and yeah. I'm familiar with the scholarships that you offer across the county. And uh, yeah. uh, apologies, certainly, we we want to be. We want to be involved yeah, it, with you it, for our it's kids. It's been multiple yeah. phone calls and emails with no responses back, right. and we want to make sure that the student from 100 and Central, at least one gets, yeah. could be possibly two. But when so, you talk $15,000, that's, absolutely. that's so, a lot uh, to get. I'll ask Mr. Brandt to get contact information, and, yes. and we'll get to the bottom of that. And thank you for coming tonight, and I'm apolo you know, apologies for the frustration, but no. by all means, we want to be part okay. of that program. Thank you, very much. So, thank you thank Mr. Mack. I want to reiterate, thank you for your patience in waiting through the whole meeting to speak to say that. I appreciate you taking the time I, to wait. I spent six and a half years in the Marine Corps. We're well trained and hurry up and wait. <laughs> well, th <laughs> thank you for your service as well. Thank you for your service, sir. Any additional public comment? Okay, hearing none, are there any board comments before we move into executive session? Okay, thank 
Thank you. Okay, so we're going to move into uh, executive session to discuss litigation, personnel matters, and HIBs with no action um, afterwards. So can I have a motion, please, to convene into executive session? So moved. All in favor? Aye. Where are we going? We are going to our conference room. Oh, okay, so we're going right to the board conference room. <laughs> 